Hello, I'm Jason with CodeLearner.com. Here in this exercise, we're asked in the main method to ask the user to input a season by inputting a number. And you can see one for spring, two for summer, and so on. So they're trying to input a season. And depending on what they enter, we're going to display a variety of messages below by calling methods. So we have a method called print spring, where we will display the message, the season is spring and flowers are blooming. Uh, if they end up picking summer, then we'll call this method called print summer, where we'll display this message, and so on for the other seasons. Now, this type of thing doesn't require any methods at all. We're just kind of crawling before we can walk, and we're showing that these uh, this kind of logical separation of the printing function can be done in methods rather than dumping everything into your into your main method you compartmentalize everything so before we look at the code let's go ahead and run it to see how it how it functions so let's go ahead and hit run here uh, ask the user please enter a season again it's reminding them one for spring two for summer and so on and when I hit the number one and then I submit that then the message I get is the, se the season is spring which is what I intended and flowers are blooming so let me, uh, and the program is now terminated. Let me go ahead and clear that and run it again. Now if I hit the number two intending summer, it'll say the season is summer and it's getting hot. And I'll run it again. Of course you can see the big picture here with the number three, the season is fall and leaves are falling. And then finally number four, the season is winter and it is snowing. Now of course this can all be done with just if statements and print statements, but we're trying to learn how to use methods here. So we want to create these subroutines. So the first thing we want to do, because we're going to take keyboard input, we want to import um, the Java util scanner that we've been using to pull keyboard input in. And then we have our program class, lesson one, exercise one. This is just like it is for every uh, everything we've done so far. And inside of that, that class, we have the main method, which is kind of where program execution starts. So the first thing we want to do is declare our scanner object so that we can actually read something from the keyboard. So we're declaring a scanner object, we're naming it input, and I know we haven't talked very much about uh, classes yet and, uh, you know, and so on, but this will become a lot more clear once we begin doing those discussions here in a few lessons. But we've been doing this before, so here you have your scanner object called input, and then we have a number, a variable called number. We're initializing it to the number one, but ultimately it will hold whatever the keyboard uh, number has been pressed. Then we want to read the keyboard input. We say the number variable is equal to input.nextInt. Now this is what we've been doing to pull keyboard input using the scanner uh, class that we have. So input is the scanner object we've created. The dot means let's go use a method of this class called next integer. So we're reading the next integer from the keyboard. So basically all up until this point, all we've basically done is print a statement on the screen saying enter a number, and then we're taking that number uh, from the keyboard there and we're putting it into our variable here. Now, you can see here it says if number is equal to one, then, and here's where we're calling our method, print spring. So print spring into the two parentheses with a semicolon tells Java that we're calling a method, uh, otherwise known as a subroutine there. So uh, we're going to call that method if the number one was pressed. If the number two was pressed, we're calling a method called print summer. If the number three was pressed, we're, print, we're calling a method called print fall. And of course, the number four was pressed, we're calling something called print winter. Now we can name these methods anything we want. We choose to name them this because it's descriptive. So now what we've done here, here's the main method with the opening curly braces. And everything in here, all the way up until this curly brace, you can see it's kind of highlighted. This is the main method. So program execution comes in, reads the keyboard, prints the message, and then there's just a bunch of if statements saying, hey, depending on what's come in, execute these methods or call these methods. Now outside of this curly brace, down below, I have defined my first external method, external to the main method. Um, and here we have print spring. All right, now we've talked about this in the main lesson here. The word void just means that this method is not going to return anything back to where it's being called from. It's not intended to return a number or a calculation back. It's because this method is just going to print something to the screen. That's all it does. So you see this method has an opening curly and a closing curly. And inside of it, there's a single statement that just tells it to print this single line to the screen. So when this is... Uh, satisfied here when they enter the number one we jump from this point down to this method execute this uh, statement 
and then this method is over at the curly brace here, so we bounce back up here, and of course, since the number one was input, we'll just bounce over these, not do anything else, we'll get to the end of the main method here, and then we'll exit. Right? Now, of course, if the number two was entered, we have the print summer method, which is here, which again prints this statement. The print fall prints this statement, and the print winter prints this statement. So we have four separate methods uh, defined. Each one has the void keyword out in front because none of these methods are intended to return a calculation or return a value back to where we're calling from. The public static, you'll just have to hang on for a little while longer until we can talk about objects. I'll explain what the public static means in a little while. But anyway, any of these methods basically are just printing a single line statement. So obviously, we didn't have to use subroutines or methods here. We could just, uh, instead of this, we could have just put a print statement here and a print statement here and a print statement here and a print statement here. But I think you can see the power of organizing your um, major, the major themes of your program or compartmentalizing them into methods because you can, this is just a single line, but this print screen, this print spring method could have lots of things in here. We could have calculations in here, we could have additional print statements, could have for loops in here. It can contain its own little world of program execution and whenever it's done executing this method it will bounce back up to where it was called from. So that's how I did it. Yours might look a little different. Um, I did my calling with if statements. You might use something different. Um, you might name your method something a little different. But the basic idea is the same. You have a main method here that ends right here. Your methods uh, beyond that are external to main uh, here. The closing curly brace at the very end is closing. Notice every Java program is a class definition. We're going to get to classes later. You just have to Keep in mind, though, that every Java program is a class, and so that last curly brace goes with the class definition. So make sure you understand this. If yours looks a little different, that's okay. The main idea is you want to take a keyboard input, and based on that input, you want to call different methods to execute code in the Java example here.